Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my review of the Shield and Knives Barrascuta folding knife. You're at the We All Juggle Knives channel, by the way. Welcome, one and all. So as you can see, this has a large lanyard slot, a little bit of carbon fiber on the handle. It has an opening slot. It also has an index flipper. Right, it's got a ceramic ball bearing pivot, which allows for very smooth deployment. It's got a stainless steel handle. It's a frame lock, single position pocket clip, semi-open construction with a textured spacer. The lockup is very solid. There you see the lockup. I turned up the volume so you can hear the deployment. Ah, uh, yes. Sounds like Wolverine's claws. This deploys very smoothly because of the ceramic ball bearing pivot. And also because of the shape of the flipper. Basically, they've done it correctly. And as you can see, it works right or left hand. This also comes with a nice belt pouch. There it is. There's the belt loop there, and it has a Velcro overflap. Probably use that for one of my multi-tools. Here it is on my food scale, my food and collectible knife and multi-tool scale. 4.48 ounces, right? So not overly heavy for a large folder. Doing stuff with the blade. All right, we'll start off with some whittling. I did speed this footage up quite a bit because your time is valuable in these last, these, these final days. No, just kidding. All right, let's talk about this blade shape. They list it as a reverse tanto, a reference to uh, that last little part of the spine towards the tip, right? That little straight part, that's why they call it that. But this blade shape is actually the best thing about the knife because it's good for piercing, it's good for draw cutting, and it is good for slicing. It's closely related to uh, sheep's foot and to Warncliffe blade shapes because of the... Uh, tip is forward of the center line of the knife. All right, as you can see, it also came sharp enough to do some whittling. I call that my pressure point um, awakener there. Now the steel on this blade is D2, right? D2 tool steel. All right, next up, just cutting some paracord. This also has a titanium based coating on the blade that is to help resist corrosion. D2 is not considered a stainless steel. The coating will not come off in normal usage. Although if you were to pound this through something hard, it might, might scuff it up. All right, so it did well on the paracord and there it is on some nylon strap material. And as I said, this is a good slicer. The curve of that blade, you just uh, pull it across and through across and through. Okay, coming up, we've got some food prep. Cutting up some peppers. So let's talk about peppers. They hydrate you, they're low in calories, they have lots of fiber and phytonutrients, they fill you up. If you wanna lose some weight, try eating some peppers. There, that's, that's, my, that's my tip. But this blade shape is actually very good for uh, slicing up your food. The blade length on this is three and three quarters inches, so fairly large. Uh, most people who carry a pocket knife or just a little utility knife carry something uh, smaller, but hey, maybe you have big hands. All right, here's the initial sharpness. This is when I first got the knife. The knife is a bit thick. And there you go. So as I said, this blade is slightly thick. The edge is slightly thick, but because I am a uh, paper ninja, still had no trouble slicing the paper. So sharp edge. All right, here's the pocket clip being a pocket clip. That is how it will, that's how it will hang in your pocket there. Here's a comparison with my other Shield and Knives knife, the Bulbasaur. Now the Bulbasaur is actually Sandvik steel. And it's a very sweet knife. You can check out my previous review of the Bulbasaur, but look how different those two blade shapes are, but yet both are very useful for various tasks. The Bulbasaur has a mini barong leaf-shaped blade like a Spyderco. That is still my favorite knife of the Shielden knives. 
All right, final thoughts on this Barrascuta. Okay, well, first of all, I have spoken to Shield and Knives uh, behind the scenes. They, they were very nice. And so in the realm of constructive criticism, I got to say, in my opinion, the best way to sell more of these knives would be to change the handle material to aluminum because that would make it even lighter, easier to carry. And also with aluminum, it's very easy to anodize the handle. So then imagine this with a, a textured anodized aluminum handle in Swiss knife red or in a darker metallic blue or in any of the colors that Olight uses uh, for its sprint runs. I think that would sell like really well. Okay, so yeah, up upgrade that handle, they'd sell well. Now the blade is actually the best part of this knife. Like I said, slicing, piercing, and draw cutting. To me, it screams out food prep. Now I don't need a folder in my kitchen, but it would be useful in outdoor food prep where you know, the ability to fold up and be compact would be useful, right? So to me, it screams outdoor food prep. I don't think they meant it as that, but that's what it is to me. Now, for that purpose, I don't need any coating on the knife, even though this coating is not going to come off from normal use, but I would just do away with the coating for, for that purpose. So maybe they should offer it with a satin finish. They could also go high-end and change the handle to titanium if they really wanted to try to make it more snazzy. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Now there is also the steel, that D2 steel. I would actually prefer that they use the uh, Sandvik from the Bulbasaur on this too. Or they could go, again, they could go high end with a much more expensive steel, but then the price would go up. Or they could keep this steel and perhaps lower the price a bit. Now, I'm not sure what it costs them to make this, so that's their choice, but I hope you enjoyed this review. If you like the video, consider subscribing and check out the links underneath the video that support the channel. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.